It's the last one. It's our final 10th out of 10 looks at the investigators of the investigator starter decks in Arkham Horror, the card game. I have tried to say the name of that product so much it has not gotten any easier. I'm Brandon. I'm Steven. <laughs> and we are dragging ourselves across the finish line. Um, as much as I've loved these starter decks for what they are and for all the new cards, it is exhausting having over 100 new cards come out at the same time. Yeah, and it must be tough for all of our viewers who I'm sure are not playing with any of these cards until after they've heard <laughs> our opinions on them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so you'll be relieved that you can finally play them now. I'll be relieved that we can move on to Innsmouth, which is, I still have string wrap on a week after it came out because we're still talking about these. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been, it's been a lot. I maybe we'll, we'll, we'll save it for the end, but I'm, I'm curious what your takes are on like, this dropped a bomb of, it's literally like 110 new, this is like a 25% increase to the card pool. Like what, <laughs> what are your takes on, on what that did to it? Um, but anyway, first, we still have uh, the last dozen or so of them to get through. Uh, so first up, we finally get to level up our teddy bear. <laughs> Want to give us this card? Yeah, this is the level one Cherished Keepsake. Still zero cost. Uh, and forced, when Cherished Keepsake is defeated by Horror, exile it. Oh. Uh, and it's got four sanity soak. Okay. So the difference between... This and the original Cherished Keepsake, which was level zero, is just two more horror, two more sanity on it. And then you have to exile it. Yeah, it defeated. almost seems worse, because I feel like most of the people that play Cherished Keepsake want to reuse it a bunch of times, like Yorick. Right, usually it's in your deck because you want to recur it and use it again and again. Hmm. Um, yeah, so I'd say that this is like, like for survivors, if if you're in a position where you say have a lot of of mental trauma, and you're looking at like you're in one of those rare situations um, where you'd maybe consider Elder Sign Amulet or something because you're that desperate for soak. Like this is obviously a lot better than that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it doesn't really synergize with a lot of the reasons that Survivor runs this. Yeah, I mean, one thing could be if you don't want to take Charisma and you have another ally or if someone else is taking Pete Sylvester, um, if you have some reason to not hmm. take Pete Sylvester, um, I could see this in like Calvin or something. I think right now in Calvin, I would just take Charisma and play both Jessica and Pete Sylvester. Um, yeah. But this could be an option. Um, Tommy can run this, right? He can play Survivor cards to level two. Yeah, but it's super anti-synergy with Tommy because it would yeah, never he... trigger. Yeah, would it not? It wouldn't even. He wouldn't even get the money out of it. I, yeah, I, I, you we'd might have be to, right. We'd have to reread Tommy whether the shuffle is a requirement. Either way, you can only tr like it's. Even if you did get the money, like it's still not really full using Tommy. Um, so yeah, it seems like a weird one. And Tommy has hmm. so much soak that synergizes better with his ability. Um. Okay. Well, the next card doesn't stray too far from what you'd expect. It's the leather coat, level one. Zero cost survivor assets that has four uh, health and says when leather coat is defeated by damage exile it takes up the body slot of course. Um, anything I different think stand out to you to say about this one? Slightly better because there's some characters like Patrice that probably don't care about like the the fist bonus from Jessica, so they might want to take Peter and this. Um, seems like maybe slightly mm. better for certain characters than. Like Cheris Keepsake plus Jessica. Yeah. And there's only so much that that there are there are some times when um say you're playing Meat Cleaver and you're you might have Peter Sylvester, but sometimes you get into situations where that's just not enough. Like the, the one healing per round um isn't enough. So like I could see playing these. Uh Jessica Hyde, I don't think there's there's kind of what am I trying to say here? There's not so I can see playing Cherished Keepsake kind of as part of that type of deck. Um, there isn't something like th that's an analog to that for damage, right? There isn't really a time when survivors are opting to take damage in the same way. So for that reason, I could almost kind of see this Cherished Keepsake being your like plan B in those, in those Meat Cleaver decks, and I don't really see a place for Leather Coat. 
Mm. Uh, well, there is, of course, uh, Calvin using uh, Blood Eclipse, you know, classic. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, uh, Leather Coat can, can, uh, can soak an entire fully charged Blood Eclipse. So. I'm not sure how, what that... Does the leather bleed? What's, what's happening there? Uh, I think that you fool the, the spirits by, like, cutting yourself, but you're really just cutting the leather. But the spirits are fooled. <laughs> that must be it. All right. Well, before we, <laughs> before we get too far down that rabbit hole, what's next? All right. Uh, this is the leveled up 18 Derringer. It's two cost, two XP. Uh, it's got all of the traits. Uh, and this time it has three ammo. The first one has only two ammo. Mm -hmm. To spend an ammo, fight, you get plus two fight and deal plus one damage. If you fail, place a damage on the Derringer, and the next time you trigger this ability this round, you get an additional plus one fight. Okay, so it, um, it has the same thing, obviously, that the level zero version had going for it, where you're guaranteed to only use ammo if you pass. Mm -hmm. But in this case, if you fail, it gets easier to hit on the next try. Mm -hmm. Which, Which is I very, guess... like, live and learn, something mm -hmm. like that. Which actually, there's a live and learn combo with the original that we didn't point out when we reviewed it. But if you use live and learn on an 18 Derringer fail, you can actually reload and then still hit. Um, so it does kind of extend the amount of ammo that that one had because the two ammo was a real oh, there. Because the second, the second attempt that live and learn gives you doesn't spend an ammo. Yeah. And so what you've gotten is a hope, hopefully a hit. And not and, and netted spending no ammo. That's interesting. Yeah, that's a good or point. Or if you didn't hit on the second one, you'll actually end up with more ammo than you started. So. Right. Okay. We got a, a quasi reload here in Live and Learn. Uh, um, this one, I think, kind of handles the helps with the biggest weakness the first one had of only two ammo. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the biggest upgrade here is the three ammo. I think that this the additional plus one on your next attack is interesting for Stella. I don't know of anyone else that that's interesting for because she gets that extra action if she fails. No one else really wants to be like spending their actions just to get plus one to a test. Like right there, there are better ways that they. Well, can it's, I mean, it's a backup accomplish plan. That. Like you're you're still yeah. hoping that you hit on the first one, but it right just slightly boosts the next one. Yeah. Huh. Okay, cool. Um, oh, I, I expected the next card behind this to be leveled up versions of her other assets, the old keys and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's actually a level two, a test of will. It's a zero cost spirit event that says fast play when an investigator at your location draws a non treachery, or excuse me, a non weakness treachery card. Cancel that card's revelation effect. Then test willpower three. If you fail, exile a test of will. Ooh. Oh, so this is a combination of the first two. It has the will test like XP zero version, but it has the exile like the uh, level one version. Yeah, right. So the level zero was take a test to see whether you cancel it, right? Mm -hmm. And le level one is cancel it and exile. And this is cancel it and take a test to see whether you exile. <laughs> That's I, I like that little progression. That's that's kind of neat. Um, I think it's just it's clearly an investigator to investigator basis whether they bend the extra XP for this, right? Because you've got to be pretty confident that you're going to pass this willpower test. Otherwise, you've exiled it and burned one more experience point than you needed to. Yeah, R potentially really good at Agnes. Um, if she's mm, pretty, confident. she can play this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good point, because this is cheaper than um, Ward Protection. doesn't cause horror, although occasionally that horror on Agnes is a benefit mm. if, the, uh, <laughs> if there are enemies at the location. Uh, yeah, super interesting for her. Yeah, I think the only downside is it's not a spell, so you can't find it with Arcane Initiate, and you, can't, mm -hmm. you also can't subsidize the upgrade um, with Arcane Research. That's true. That would be pretty busted if an Exile card... Right, like if because if there's a level zero version of an exile card, wouldn't you be able to like exile the high level, put in the level zero, get the free upgrade, and repeat? Yeah, I, I mean, guess at, I, at this point, mystics aren't really running out of things to use arcane research on. So 
true yeah i guess it would it would consume their arcane research for the time um so i guess there, yeah opportunity cost there yeah i can't really i'm thinking through like stella's willpower is just three are there any high willpower survi yeah, survivors I mean, Calvin, Calvin, I Calvin's guess. can be yeah. five or six i think you'd have sure. to look at it in him yeah i mean I think a lot of what we've seen here, the upgraded uh, keepsake and leather coat, and now this are potentially really interesting for a late campaign Calvin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think Calvin was already up to, to snuff. I think when he came out, he was a little underpowered. I think he was already up to snuff, but I think these are some fun new cards for him, for sure. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know that this, like, makes him more powerful, but it's new options anyway. Mm -hmm. I think also Nathaniel had a bunch of new Calvin cards, too. Uh, wow. Yes, yeah, so he had a lot of spirit cards, so. Um, yeah, I'll have to give Calvin another run. It's been a long time since I played Calvin. I was so so traumatized. I just... <laughs> Literally. I mean, you're supposed to be traumatized, so I don't know why you're objecting to <laughs> no, that. No, Calvin was supposed to be traumatized. <laughs> I got traumatized. <laughs> That's the difference. I think All you right. can use Solemn Vow to transfer your trauma to Calvin. Oh. <laughs> There wasn't even Solemn Vow last time I played Calvin. Mm, yeah. Everything is different now, huh? Yep. Yep. All right. What else have you found? Oh, I have found a leveled up. Look what I found. Uh, two XP, still two cost. Um, and then fast. Play after you fail a skill test by three or less. Wow. Discover two clues from among your location and connecting location. Ooh. Ooh, so this reminds... This is reminiscent of that leveled up seeking answers. Where all of a sudden that event lets you pluck clues from your current or connecting location. Um, and at this point, if you fail by three or less, that means a three shroud location guarantees you can play this mm -hmm. and get two clues. This, and if you're Stella, you have failed and get another action and trigger your rabbit's foot and whatever else you have going on to reward you if you fail. Uh, this seems awesome. Yeah, I mean... Almost any location in the game is at least connected to something that's three shroud or less. You know, like mm -hmm. it would be very rare to have like a five shroud that wasn't next to a three shroud. Um, yeah. So basically, your only real danger here is just that you might succeed at a skill test and yep. help you out of play. Yep. It. Whoops. Um, yeah. Yeah. I guess that is the danger. So, like, for example, let's say you pick the two shroud location next to the four shroud, you could easily succeed that test. Um, and then you have to try again. Stella can automatically fail if she draws the Elder Sign, though, so that's less of a risk than for her than uh, most. <laughs> you seal the Elder Sign to ensure a failure. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Actually, although you can probably use, maybe it's a reason to take that, um, the card that cancels the auto-fail, but then it makes your test worse later. Um, you could use those to help you fail. Um, Oh, you know, it cancels oh. three auto fails, but then it gives yeah, you three worse. It's attacks. the something bobble, nightmare bobble. Yeah, that's the one. And you get yeah. green parasites. Yeah, so. that's actually really interesting. That's actually wanting those dream parasites in your hand as a tool to fail when you want to make sure to fail. This is okay. This is getting interesting. I think really, I think that this is one of the strongest clue events in the game. Right, yeah. like I think, I think this compares favorably to like I think I prefer this to seeking answers, um, because it's just it's something that you can play in when you know it's going to work. Like, right, you don't spend the resources on this and then have it not trigger. You only play it when you fail. Versus seeking answers, you could still auto fail on your investigation or something like mm -hmm. that. And this is, it's not a sure thing that you may play it, but it is a sure thing that you will not waste it. And I think that that's very valuable. Yeah, the only thing I would say is that um, the original is really good, and with cards like Old Key Ring, which are, you're probably going to be playing in these decks, you can already basically guarantee it for four shroud or less. Um, mm. So I don't know that I would always have this be like one of the first upgrades, just because I'm already pretty happy with the original. Um, but I do think if you have XP, it's certainly a very good card. Yeah. Uh, I think the one time that I would make it a very high priority might be True Solo, which I speak mostly in hypotheticals when I talk about True Solo, since I don't play it very often. But a lot of the time in True Solo, there are not two clues on your location. 
to get, right? And so being able to get two from among your locations, you're a lot more likely to get full value out of this than you are with look what I found in, in solo. Yes and no, because I do think true solo, you're also less likely to have um, other locations revealed than in multiplayer, mm. where it's much more likely that someone has gone ahead and revealed a connecting location. Um, That's true, although you can... You you can, if you know this is in your hand, you can move on and reveal the next location, knowing that there you can investigate and reach backwards to pull the clue that you left behind. Yeah, it, it could be awkward if like you're on a three cost or a three shroud location and then you move to the next and it's five shroud and you're like, oh man, I was on the perfect one yeah. before, but this wasn't revealed. Um, yeah, good point. Yeah, there, there's, I mean, given that it's generous with the fail by three or less, like there's a good chance that it'll be something that you can fail by three or less. Well, we're seeing leveled up versions of maybe multiple of these fortune events uh, with level two dumb luck next. It's a two cost event that is fast. Play after you fail a skill test by three or less during an evasion attempt against a non-lead enemy. Place that enemy on the bottom of the encounter deck. Um, the okay, so tough. two things are different. The fail by three or more, or three or less rather. And then I was trying to remember, does it go on top or does it go, yeah, does it get it shuffled in? Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, placing the enemy on the bottom of the encounter deck might as well destroy it. Um, right? Well, For no, the because you're still, I mean, but depending on your order, you might actually prefer to place it on the top. You know, for example, if my lead investigator is um, Roland, I would much rather place the enemy on top than have Roland get a running remains or something. So I think this is actually mm. not always better. Yeah, I don't think you're usually putting card slots in your deck with the primary purpose of, of just shuttling an enemy to someone else. I think you'd rather put in the one that, that functionally d discards an enemy from play. But, but uh, I know, no, but it's very different though, because mm, no, enemies are not, enemies are not definitely not always worse than the average treachery. Like, I don't think that this is clearly better than on top because there's plenty of treacheries that are worse than an enemy. Well, I mean, so these are these are for two different purposes, right? Like the first dumb luck, and I'm surprised you're defending dumb luck so much because I feel like no one ever played it ever. <laughs> but well, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's a great card, but um, I just don't see the bottom of the deck as better than the top of the deck. Wow. Yeah, I cannot disagree more. There are so many strong non-elite enemies that you just are not prepared to deal with, and this gets rid of them. And that's a card you might put in your deck. You're not going to put a card in your deck that just takes these enemies and just draws them next turn instead. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I, I feel like any, any multiplayer game, there's someone who's good at dealing with enemies. Like I don't think it's a bad thing to draw it later. I mean, if if that's the case, then you're just not going to put this in your deck either, I guess. But well, right, yeah. like if <laughs> if if you have someone with you whose job is to deal with enemies, why why is this card in your deck? Well, because uh, they they're not always near you. Like it's good to it's good yeah, to get rid of them. It also like the the original yeah. it prevents a treachery from happening. No, because... you're wrong on this. This is this is about the most wrong I can remember you being. <laughs> the original prevents the top card from being a treachery. So like, I mean, so. I mean, like, this is like saying that, that, um, what, like, stargazing prevents a treachery, right? Do you think stargazing is as good as Ward of Protection? Uh, Which cancels a specific thing and makes it not come back? Stargazing is pretty good. I, I think eh, there's not a this case not for it. I mean, protection. Ward is more flexible. I, I don't yeah. Know. It's, good. it's, it's better. <laughs> Right, like, mystics run two wards of protection and then consider running stargazing, not debating between which of the two to run. Um, yeah, no, I don't really know how to keep articulating my, my point of view in new ways, but yeah, I think you're, com I think, <laughs> I think you're completely wrong. I don't, I don't see this as being very good. Maybe true solo if you're just, like, not trying to deal with enemies at all. Yeah, I don't, I don't see how you can possibly make an argument that that removing an enemy from play is not good. That's that's great. <laughs> it can be like doing as much as six damage with this card that triggered when you failed. 
right. don't know. What's well. next? <laughs> next is uh, leveled up unexpected courage. Uh, hmm. Maybe this is finally one that's a little different than the other upgraded skill cards. Uh, only has two wild icons, so same as oh. the original. Um, but if this test fails, return unexpected courage to your hand. Hmm. Hmm. I don't like it. I don't think you're going to spend two experience on a card that... I mean, what, this is like auto-fail protection, right? Like, you pretty much put Unexpected Courage into a test that you plan to pass. Well, this also it's... gives you the option to toss it into any kind of, like, fail-by test. Because, yeah. like, there's a good chance you get free value where you fail by less. Um, and, like, worst case scenario, you pass. And, like, that's fine, too. Um, so That's true, actually. And this is something that... If it is a scenario that has, I'm trying to think of, of like, um, I'm totally blanking on like, uh, oh, it's City of Archives has a uh, fail by treachery that removes X cards from the game. And it's like, what am I trying to say? If you have, if you're playing scenarios that have treacheries that have fail by tests that are very high, like I wouldn't, I don't think I would put this in my deck because there's a lot of rotting remains in a campaign because you're just going to usually pass those tests if you're using this in which case the the level zero unexpected courage is just as good if there are treacheries with very high difficulty fail by tests this is interesting but that's a really niche situation um there's there is those in a lot of campaigns though dunwich had them for milling um then circle on dun had them for milling the encounter deck um so I think those those are fairly common. I also think like I guess um you often don't pass um like rotting remains. Though I guess you probably would you're more likely to with this, I guess. But um Yeah, I mean it, like if if Stella puts this into rotting remains, she's testing at five versus three. Depends on what difficulty she's on, but that's a great chance of passing. Uh Circle and Dunn also has that really nasty um for uh threshold will where it's like get gain surge if you fail by two oh. or more um that one yeah comes up a lot is that demonic really piping or it's, it's one of those ones that you're trying to avoid having three copies it, of it yeah it puts it in by the agenda deck uh, um so. yeah i see this is a real low priority use of your xp but I do like that it is different from the other four leveled up skill <laughs> corset skills that we've seen uh, across these packs because those got old um, and were not just none of them were that exciting. I think that this is at least a more interesting option to have that I think is pretty cool. Yep. I'd agree. It's not like super pretty. Uh, Granny Orn, the tough old bird, has an upgraded version. She was introduced in Stella's deck at level zero. This one's level three. Four cost, it's an ally. Uh, you get plus one willpower and plus one intellect. When an investigator at your location would fail a skill test, exhaust Granny Orn. That investigator either gets plus one skill value or minus one skill value for that test. She has one health, three sanity. And I'm immediately having to compare her to her old version because I feel like the only difference is the stat. No, no, this one lets you succeed the test. Granny Orn did not. Oh. She can give you plus one skill value so it can turn a failure into a success, whereas before all she could do is manipulate the failed by amount. Yeah. Okay, that's so, a pretty big so, difference. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is basically just plus one to a stat of anyone at your location, but like retroactively, which is. Yeah, which is really strong. It's almost, like, it's almost a lucky. I would rather. Yeah, you compare this to, I mean, any of the talents that give you plus two to your skill. Compare this to well prepared or something because that usually gives you plus two. Like I think what plus one in retrospect is a lot more powerful than plus two before. Like plus one after you draw is more powerful than plus two before you draw. So that makes especially this pretty good. Yeah, especially when you consider this is any investigator, which none of those uh, at your location. Other. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Actually, it's very rare to be able to give those talent style exhaust this asset for a stat boost card to other players or effect to other players. 
Um, yeah, I would probably make this, especially in multiplayer, when you're more likely to have a situation every round where this could make or break a test. Um, I think this is a no-brainer. This is a great upgrade. Yeah, I think um, it's also the two stat boosts is really good. Those are things that those are stats you use pretty much every game. Like there's always going to be wool treacheries, and there's always going to be turns where you investigate. Uh, maybe that the the plus one book might make you accidentally succeed at some tests that you can't look what I found. <laughs> maybe it's the only <laughs> downside. Um, but uh, yeah, I think really solid. I think they're smart to make this three XP so Agnes couldn't take it because plus one will and a really awesome ability would be maybe um, too good for her. Yeah, yeah, this would be very strong for her. <laughs> um, also, minor point, but anti synergy with any kind of rogue succeed by two or more deck because um, it's not help you succeed even more. Uh, yeah, I don't know how many of those rogue decks are going to be playing level. Oh well, I mean because other the, your survivor yeah. player could have this. That's true. It does not make a pass test pass more. Yeah. That is still so. If you're playing you two player with Winifred, yeah, maybe a low priority. Maybe uh, if there's a level five Granny Orn someday, she'll be able to, to help. <laughs> when you with would that. succeed by less than three. Like. Yeah. Uh, all right. Another fortune. Ooh, I just mentioned it. This is Lucky, mm -hmm. level three, cost zero, which I don't think they've had a zero cost version before. Mm -mm. Um, fast, play when an investigator location would fail a skill test. They get plus three to their skill value for that test. That investigator draws one card. Whoa, this is upgraded in like three different ways. Yeah, so remember that there, and it's easy to forget, there is a another leveled up version of Lucky. I think it was, oh, also yeah. in, it was also in the core set, and it just adds a card draw. I think that's all it does. Yeah, and that one I think yeah. is 2 XP. So this yes. one is way better for one more XP. Yeah, there was a, the core set, like the, the experience point economy kind of, I think, valued like one action worth of stuff, like one resource discount or one draw a card at like one or two experience and i think that the game got more generous with its leveled up cards over time a little bit and we can see that here because this gives you a lot more than that for just one more experience um, but i actually meant it upgrades lucky level two in three different ways so if you're comparing it to the original it upgrades four ways um because it reduces cost mm -hmm. lets you play on other investigators increases skill and then if you're comparing it to lucky zero it also adds a card draw oh i don't even think that i had crossed my mind that lucky could not be played on other investigators and now this one can that's a big yeah. difference it is a big difference because <laughs> yeah i caught on that it was cheaper the skill value boost was higher and then it's got and it's got the card draw um yeah be, for so a couple things being able to give it to any investigator is huge and the previous one cost one resource right or yeah. the previous both of them dropping from one to zero resources is the biggest and most important drop in price that a card can have right <laughs> especially for survivors that can play dark horse like oh that's yeah crazy yeah like yeah just just taking something from costing anything to being free means that you never have to consider what else you want to pay for when you're playing this card and it also means that if a treachery or whatever has just sapped you of all your resources this is still in play uh you can't can't possibly not afford this uh barring a couple situations where costs in your hand are raised um yeah i love it i would never spend the xp on level two lucky but i would certainly consider it here it's it's very much it's a utility card right that i can't think of a time that putting i would put my my first three experience into this because it's not going to really like shape the strategy of my deck mm -hmm. in a way that i can think of um it's just yeah. a really strong maybe utility if you're card. like very support oriented or something um it might be an early one. Um, you could maybe combo it with the original Granny Orn to like, if someone fails by four, you trigger Granny <laughs> Orn and then this or something. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's not probably not a built around card. Yeah, failing by four doesn't even happen all that often. So, uh, okay, yeah, you're right. Uh, it's a very powerful card that you probably aren't building around. It's just a nice to have. And then can Mateo take this as well? Can he take? Um, or is it, is no. It blessed or fortune. It, he he takes blessed, and uh, okay. so so this is I think out of the question for him. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, nice. Yeah, it's level three, so pr pretty much not not a lot of non survivors going to be taking this as much as they would like to. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, cool. so I think that this next card has a misprint on it because on if your card looks like mine, it says level four survivor card. What? This that's is not possible. That's not a thing, right? All right. All right let's, so let's so FFG. Yeah. So all right. So chainsaw level three survivor card. I assume. Uh, it's a four cost asset. It's an item, a tool, a weapon, and melee. It uses three supplies. Action, spend one supply to fight. You get plus two combat and deal plus two damage for this attack. If this attack fails, either place one supply on chainsaw or deal one damage to the attacked enemy. Uh, it takes up both hand slots. Seems good. Yeah, I mean, it kind of has infinite ammo, as long as you succeed some of the time and fail some of the time. Um, well, is... no, it works It works like the 18 Derringer, right, where it basically oh. guarantees three hits. Got it, yeah, yeah, that's, you're right. It if you fail, it's after you spend. It guarantees three hits, or you can opt to, instead of recovering one of those misses as a supply, do a one damage, which in certain situations, if that's all you need, that sounds great. I think that's a, a, an option that you would not be doing most of the time, but sometimes it will be super clutch. Yeah. And survivors don't really have a lot of crucial things that they need their hands for, right? Like, you're, you're probably uh, not... Investigation you're probably not... is the big thing. I mean, flashlight and key ring mm. and lock picks for Daisy or uh, yeah. Wendy. Uh, it's, it's almost always investigation that they're using their hands up for. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so if you're going for a fighty survivor, this seems like a no-brainer. Yeah, I mean, this is a big, big boost to Yorick. Uh, yes. Why? Just because he's fighty? But, because no, because like over the course of a campaign, like he starts out and he's like a guardian with a cool ability. Mm -hmm. But by the end of a campaign, you're like, oh, man, if I was a real guardian, I would have all these awesome weapons. Yeah. And instead, I have this crappy, like, old hunting rifle. Um, so, you know, True. this is, even if you take out the failability, because York's not going to fail that often, I think this is still generally better than old hunting rifle. Yeah, I, you're right. Old hunting rifle is, is not great. Um yeah, I think, okay, I, I see what you're saying. I thought you were getting at, like, yeah, he'll be discarding this and recurring it from play a lot, and it's, but it's very expensive, so that's not... I no, don't no, really this see is it. just a three damage weapon. Yeah, yeah, no, you're, you're, I, I see why you said it now. And yeah, you're, you're totally right. It, it's a late campaign card for him. Um, and I mean, for Calvin, too, right? Like, Calvin doesn't have a lot, of, can get his combat skill up and then doesn't have a lot of ways to, like, convert it into a lot of damage. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so I think this is great, but potentially great for him. Cool. It's yeah, also I mean, a oh, go ahead. Like even Stella could take this. Like maybe late game, you don't care about investigation as much anymore. Um, and like she has a probably an okay chance of hitting. And then obviously, if you fail, it's not the end of the world. So, yeah, I mean, with this and the option to level up her gun, I think this pack is definitely giving us kind of a combat focused. Stella option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's hard for me to see how well it would work. I guess this does, if the attack fails, she can like deal damage and get the new action, right? Mm -hmm. So that's cool. Yeah. Although you, then she's so not you, getting the supply. You back. lose one of the ammo, yeah. which is pretty rough. Is this. Who's in the art? Do we know who that person is? Is that. Because of the. the almost like cocktail dress type attire. I, I almost wanted to say Jenny, but I'm not sure that's Jenny. And if so, why is Jenny on a survivor card? Um, yeah, I think that's either not an investigator or it's like what Stella looks like when she's not delivering mail, but going to a cocktail party, <laughs> a cocktail party where there are chainsaws. Um, but my hunch is probably just a different character. Actually, you're right. I guess that could be Stella. I could see it. Just She just swapped out her postal carrier hat for like a, a sunday hat sunday best yeah, I guess the, hat. the hair is kind of similar yeah okay uh anyway this next one has the same misprint this is weird what hmm. 
Uh, your turn to read, I think. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> quick learner. Um, yeah, says says four XP. Um, we'll have to see what the errata is. Uh, and then this is a permanent. Uh, during or before your first action of each of your turns, each skill test you perform gets plus one difficulty. During or after your third action of each of your turns, each skill test you perform gets minus one difficulty. And it's okay. And it's permanent. Yeah. Weird. This art is awesome. This art's like Cthulhu chess. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, this was actually a Game of Thrones card. Um, they Quick they Learner was the name of it? Uh, no, no. But this effect was a Game mm. of Thrones card called Lord of the Crossing. Worked the exact same way. You got minus one to your first challenge, and you got plus one to your third challenge. Um, that card is actually super good, though it had a kicker that you like get an extra point if you win the third challenge. Mm. Um, so this doesn't have that like win condition the way that that one did. Um, but... This one, I guess the focus more is on there's a potential like fourth challenge um, or fourth action that you can do with Stella or Wendy. Um, right. So I think that's that's part of it. And then also you might you might have some actions that you want to succeed and some that you want to fail. So you can sort of sequence them in that order. Hmm. OK, this is a lot to wrap my head around. So really, it can be basically a permanent skill boost if you focus on not spending your first actions testing, right? If you're using them to move and to draw cards, that kind of thing, this is all upside. Yeah. And if you combine it with someone who wants to fail, the plus one difficulty can be upside, mm -hmm. right? Stella can fail this plus one difficulty and then get an extra action, which then, because she's a quick learner has minus one difficulty when that's tacked on to the end of her turn. This is cool. I, yeah, I think the thing, though, is that you would never actually spend four XP to just get minus one difficulty on your third action. So I do think you have to be reliably getting a fourth action. I don't like know. Four XP if... is a lot for minus one difficulty. On yeah, it. but people spend three XP to just start the game with an extra card in their hand, right? Like, permanents are expensive because the fact that they're permanents is very strong. So I don't even think I necessarily agree that this is not a good buy for most characters. Like, I think everyone can consider this, and I think the... Here's a question. Is... Does this affect the Mythos phase? Does this make Mythos uh phase... I believe, or not because it's not during one of your turns. I believe MJ Newman clarified that uh, it's only during the investigation. Okay, great. That That is how I read this, I think, because it's not each of your turns. Because if you extend it, if you extend before this to mean before your turn, then like every point in time is both before and after a turn. And you'd really have like an existential crisis. <laughs> All right, I, I'm really excited by this card. It's a brain bender, and that's, that's part of why I think why I like it. Mm -hmm. But I, I almost wish that more characters could... Like, I almost wish it was neutral or something, just so that more characters could play it, because I don't think... Or I, I think it, it would be a fun option to have for more investigators, but I'm excited about it. Um... Also, there's two copies in here. Nothing stopping you from buying both. If for some reason you wanted plus two, minus two. I mean, if Which... one's good, if one is good, I guess the second one's even better. Or like second one is equally good. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, yeah, it, it becomes much better because now your third action, you can really start doing stuff you're not that great at, you know, like. Yeah. Yorick can try to evade someone or like Stella can try just a regular investigate without a key ring or something like that. So. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a ton of XP. Uh, I don't think it would be my like super early buy, but I do think eventually, if you want one of these, you want to. I'm looking forward to playing some survivors in like standalone, so I can just burn eight XP straight into this. <laughs> like, yeah, just give me that weakness. I want two quick learners. That's that's how I roll. <laughs> yep. Oh, I feel like I've seen this cat before. Um, deja vu. I'm starting to think this is intentional. This one says it's level five. What? 
Do we? Ridiculous. <laughs> we finally have survivor cards above level three. Uh, all right. Well, this one is a talent and is cursed. A cursed talent. How does that work? Anyway, uh, it's permanent and it says in between two scenarios of a campaign, reduce the experience cost to repurchase up to three cards that you exiled during the last scenario by one each. Haven't you seen this before? Um. Okay. This really. So. Hmm. Okay. So this guess, potentially theoretically, makes... if you max this out, you can pay it off in two scenarios. Yeah. All right. Let me think about this. People don't play a lot of exile cards until usually very late in the campaign. Because, so for two reasons, because they don't want to burn XP on, on consumables early on, but also because, like, how many exile cards that are all that good are there? So, like, test a test of, of will, will and yeah. fortune or fate are the best. And test right. of will, you'll be able to get for free with this if you do the one XP. Yeah. Fortune or fate, you'll still have to pay one. But this costs five. So you've got to, you've got to have at least probably four or five exile cards in your deck to make sure that you are going to exile three of them to get this value. Yeah. And exile cards, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about the other ones, like Fire Extinguisher, Flare, like it's a lot of kind of not great stuff anyway that the fact uh, that it exiles... Stroke of Luck is pretty good, mm. but it costs two, so making that cost one, you know, it's probably worth considering. Yeah, this is dangerous with cards that cost more than one because if you can't afford or don't want to buy them back then, then your window passes on, on that discount, mm -hmm. right? Sure. Although, hey, nothing's stopping you from getting two copies of this one either. There's two in this pack. Yeah, I think, like, Stroke of Luck, I think, has a wild and it's optional whether to exile it. So, like, maybe if you've already exiled, like, three Test of Will and Fortune or Fates, you just use it as a wild and you don't do the exile part. Um, yeah. So, I feel like this should have been our big plot twist for the end of this card review, right? Like our Chuck Fergus style, like, oh, there were all these exile cards in the pack that now seem great. But there weren't. There was just like a, a little bit better of a sanity soaking teddy bear and a little bit better of a, of a damage soaking leather coat and a test of will that you actually don't necessarily exile, at least the level two one. Mm -hmm. So this is weird because I just feel like it wasn't put in a pack along with exciting things to make me be excited for this. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I do think one thing I'm thinking is that it might uh, inspire like a bit of a new archetype um, that's basically like Carolyn as a survivor where you just do complete support. Like all of your cards are canceling damage canceling effects canceling doom and you spend your xp on this and it's actually you could get to if you wanted i don't know that there's enough exiles um, <laughs> but like just a super supporty survivor um that because you're spending xp on this you're maybe not that great at actually doing stuff until maybe scenario five or six when you finally spend some xp on yourself but that at least you're um canceling all the bad stuff for everyone else yeah. Okay. I do like that finally the the first and only level zero survivor card like leans into what is special about survivor, right? Like no one else has XL cards. You mean level five? What did I say? Level zero. Oh yes, yes, I'm at level five. <laughs> the first first level five survivor card like leans into kind of what's special about survivor, which which the 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 one thing that it does that is completely unique to, to red is those exile effects. So I think that's cool. But I'm still waiting, I think, on there to be a little bit more of a suite of exile options. Um, yeah, which I wasn't really expecting future cycles to have much exile because I, I thought that was mostly a Dunwich mechanic. Um, I guess, no, I guess they've done Yeah, it no, much. I think it's kind of proven to be evergreen. I think that that's, that's continued. Uh, it almost but most should... cycles have only had like a couple, like it, you know. Yeah, it really no exile was in the core rulebook, right? There were just no cards. 
or does do the Excel rules have to be printed every time and every have product to be printed that... every time? <laughs> Go so figure. it'll be like one or two packs per cycle, I think. Yeah. Cool. Hmm. Okay, that's something to kind of like put in the binder, but not forget about. <laughs> is is like kind of where I where I am on that. Okay, so when we looked at Stella, and I am sure that that video went up and got probably the most. Uh, resentful and disagreeing YouTube comments we've gotten yet, as I'm sure that there are people who have figured out Stella in a way that, at least on our first read-through of her, we kind of didn't. Uh, but has this changed your mind on Stella, or or made her make more sense? Uh, I mean, I think Quick Learner is probably the most obviously synergistic with her. Mm -hmm. um, I think she works better with that than anyone except for maybe um, Wendy, because like Leo gives her a fourth action. Um, but yeah, so that's probably the most synergistic. Um, I think, and, and Granny Orn to some extent too. Um, I think like Lucky Three is just goes in every survivor. So I don't think that that's really a boost to her specifically. Yeah, like I think that some of these cards, like leveled up, look what I found, discovering two clues uh, from among your locations um, and getting an extra action. Like there's a lot of great synergy with her here. I'm not sold, like, I'm, I'll, I'll have to just try it. I'm not sold, so, in order for Stella's bonus action to, you're right, Quick Learner adds some extra context to her bonus action, but kind of outside of that, the only reason, the only way her, be, her, what am I saying, the only real way that her bonus action is exciting is if she also got something substantial out of the action when she failed. Mm -hmm. And... I mean, I guess, I guess all of that takes is rabbit's foot, because then you've drawn a card. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, maybe this is just better than it. Maybe I've just read the word fail so many times that I can't <laughs> convince myself this is good. I don't know. Um, I do think one thing I didn't think of with the first one, but I saw it in some deck lists and stuff, is like using Dark Horse with Stella um, seems pretty good, because you can potentially fail the first action, play Look What I Found, and then be at like zero for the rest of the turn. Hmm. Um, it you know sometimes it may take a little bit of uh wrangling to to make sure that your money's at the right amount so um yeah that's the thing is to uh, for cards that cost more than one like look what i found costs two that means you would have had to basically uh not have dark horse active for the previous round the round where you had one uh, or, well you, or you, you can have it active it. for like some of the round but then like click for a dollar at the end um, to have two mm. ready. Or at the beginning of your next turn, you, you immediately take a resource and then your second action is look what I found. Yeah, that's true. Although once you're a quick learner, you don't want to be using those late actions on on an action for a resource. Uh, well, yeah, it would be your like first action then. Yeah. Um, it's, it's funny. I am both like most and least excited to play the Stella deck, I think. I'm like not excited because reading through the cards it didn't seem very good but also most excited because i feel like i must be missing something and once i play it i will understand what it is <laughs> so my take is i think with just at level zero she can probably be a very good clue for um you just have to modify the deck a bit like it didn't have wing yet which is like so it only had look what i found for clue acceleration but like yeah had wing yet i think she's a very good clue on level zero i think she's gonna run out of um fight pretty quickly with only the two ammo and the two guns um so i think you probably want to pair her with someone who's a pretty good fighter or do yeah. a lot of evasion on like your first scenario um what the xp cards give you is like a bit way to extend her fighting a bit because you now have two three ammo weapons that you can add to her yeah okay so let's zoom out of it a little bit what we've now looked at five Investigator starter decks and their upgrades, over 100 cards. Thoughts on any of it? W what it did for the game? Was it worth $75 to buy all five of them? <laughs> what do you think? Uh, I think it was a very cool idea. Um, I think anytime you do something a little different, um, it generates buzz. People are you know, thinking, is this a good time to buy in? Um, and certainly, you know, some people trapped at home might be playing more Arkham mm -hmm. than they normally would because, you know, you can play it solo or two-handed. Um, so that kind of worked out well. Yeah. Um, 
I don't think that we need it like every year or anything. Like I think overall having five new investigators per cycle is enough, Mm -hmm. but it's a cool thing to do like once. Yeah, I think ultimately the new investigators were probably like the least exciting part to me because at this point, and I've said the same thing about my kind of lack of enthusiasm for even more basic weaknesses is at this point we have, I think with Innsmouth, 45 investigators now. So I'm not playing all 45 of the ones that I already have. And so at throwing more of them at me doesn't, it doesn't give me more time to play the game <laughs> to actually use all these. Uh, but the big burst in new options, and I think particularly the higher level cards in these packs, added some really interesting stuff and did, I think that some deck archetypes were created with most of these packs. All, all these packs, maybe everything except Jacqueline. That was still very, that was very basic mystic-y. Um, mm-hmm. But like Nathaniel added this guardian event archetype. Um, all you kind of have to play him to, for that to make sense. But still, it added like guardians have fight events as kind of a new thing that they can do. Um, Winnie added these events that she can recur uh, to to convert resources into or to what, take take tests and get big results out of them. Um, it combined with rogues liking skill cards and passing tests already. Mm-hmm. Uh, Harvey Walters really had brought home this hand size archetype, which I've played some of a big hand Ursula, and I'm actually having a pretty good result from it and, and, and really enjoying it. So I think that's cool. And what does that leave? Uh, oh, and, and Stella, I think that this really leans into failing in a way that makes failing... <laughs> More, I, I still don't know how to articulate why this is interesting, but it is interesting. <laughs> so I, I think the investigators themselves, I could kind of take or leave. They could have just, I could have waited six months for them to be the investigators in the next cycle as far as their abilities and things. But I'm really excited about the cards. And I think the big jump start to the card pool or big boost to the card pool is, is welcome. Yeah, I think the next time that they want to do something like this, they could easily not include investigators and maybe like include a box centered around like a new mechanic or something like, yeah. um, you know, just a player card only box that has like a new keyword or, you know, something like that um, that makes you rethink a bunch of different factions um, would be a cool yeah. product that doesn't necessarily need investigators. Yeah. That's a great thought. Kind of, I mean, kind of like, I think the what probably the best example of something that would go good with that is in Innsmouth we have curses and blessings coming that my expectation is that that will play into a lot of the player cards in that probably that whole cycle. And so I don't know what it would be, but the next kind of mechanic like that that maybe uses new tokens or kind of die, has a die rolling. What die roll? Yes. <laughs> the player card box that adds dice. Or like some kind of legacy player cards where you like add stickers to them as you use them or something. Oh man, I would love I I I I'm a sucker for legacy games. I love we played the Netrunner legacy campaign together, which was I was really glad they tried it. <laughs> it was not maybe not the biggest success, but I would be all about a legacy Arkham product. Bring it on. Oh okay. Well, that finally <laughs> does it for our talk through the investigator starter decks. Uh, If this is the first video you've come across, thank you for checking out Optimal Play. Uh, We'd love if you would subscribe to us, check out our other videos, including nine more on this exact subject, and lots of playthroughs and uh, streams and things of other board and card games as well. And uh, yeah, we're happy to have you here. Uh, Well, the train's going to keep on rolling because Innsmouth is out, and so we're going to have a few hopefully shorter videos, but probably a video about each class's cards in that box. That's what we did with Dream Eaters, and I think it made more sense than having it be a three-hour video. So, (laughs) Steven, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you soon for Innsmouth. Hey, everyone. And thank you for watching. Till next time, be optimal.